Today I'll be performing The Worker and Spartacus through the Gladiators at Capua. Alright, alright, look. I didn't want to tell you this, but I've fallen behind. Well, yeah, it's a work. Where else could it be? I can't keep up. Well, recently they've, uh, they've uh, let a few people go. There are fewer and fewer people doing the same amount of work. I mean, they got me, me of all people, running the accounting department entirely by myself. I'm not even management, man. No, apparently I'm too inadequate to get promoted. And that's not all. I'm expected to take incoming calls because there's no receptionist, fix all the computers because there's no tech department. I've broken about five computers today. What is, apparently you're not supposed to have a flare near them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in charge of the mail room where I'm getting nothing but death threats from my girlfriend now, the cafeteria, <laughs> the janitorial services. I'm in charge of research and development. Where are we even developing? A new Apple product? I didn't know we were connected to Apple. Fine. Last week. Last week, human resources let go. Then the whole department. And I received a memo, which I had to type out myself because there's no secretary, instructing me to familiarize myself with all applicable state and federal guidelines. Tomorrow, I was supposed to, supposed to start mediating all employee disputes. I'm fine. I haven't had a fight with myself in a week. Yes, you have. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I'll I don't know what to do. I'd ask the legal department for advice, but I didn't go into college, so I wouldn't know what to tell myself. And you know what? To top it all off, I gotta take out the CEO's dog out four times a day at regular intervals. This dog's got a weird stomach, man, and he's got a strict schedule. You call me Chief. And you do well. Call him chief for 12 long years. This man upon the arena. Every shape of man or beast the broad empire of Rome could furnish. If there be one among you who could say that ever, in public fight or private brawl, my actions to belay my tongue, let him stand forth and say it. If there be three in all your company, dare face me on the bloody sands, let them come forth. Well, I was not always thus. A hired butcher. A savage chief of still more savage men. My ancestors came from old Sparta, and so among the vine-clad rocks and citron groves of Syracia. My early life ran quiet as the brooks by which I sported, and when at noon, I gathered the sheep beneath the shade and played upon the shepherd's flute. There was a friend, the son of a neighbor, to join me in that pastime. We led our flocks to the same pasture and partook together our rustic meal. One evening, and the sheep were folded, and we all gathered beneath the, and we were all seated beneath the myrtle which shaded our cottage. My grandsire, an old man, was ter telling of Marathon and Lucra, and how in ancient times a little band of Spartans in the fire of the mountains had withstood a whole army. I did not then know what war was, but my cheeks burned. I know not why. And I clasped the knees of that venerable man until my mother. Parting the hair from my forehead and kissing my throbbing temples, bade me go to rest and think no more of these old tales and savage wars. That very night, the Romans landed upon our coast. I saw the breast that nourished me trampled by the hoof of the war horse, the bleeding body of my father flung into the blazing rafters of our dwelling. Today I killed a man in the arena, and when I broke his helmet this class, behold, he was my friend. He smiled at me faintly, gasped, and died. Uh, I told the praetor that that man had been my friend, generous and brave. And I begged 
that I may bear away his body to burn it on a funeral pyre and mourn over its ashes. Fine. Hey, on my knees. Aye, upon my knees, I beg that poor boon. While all the rabble shouting derision, demon gets rare sport to see Rome's fiercest gladiator tremble and turn pale and tremble at the sight of that piece of bleeding clay. The praetor stepped back for me. Fine. The praetor stood back as I were pollution. And said sternly, Thou art no noble men, but Romans. So, fellow gladiators, must you and must I die like dogs? Oh, Rome, Rome, thou hast been a tender nurse to me. Aye, thou hast. I that hasn't given that poor gentle timid shepherd lad who who didn't know a harsher tone than a flute note uh -huh. muscles of line iron and heart of flint muscles of iron and heart of flint Who taught him to drive the sword between, between breast links and plated mail and warm it in the marrow of his foe? Fine. To gaze in the glaring. To gaze in the glaring eyes of the Numidian lion, even as a boy upon a laughing girl. Fine. And he shall pay thee back. Until the yellow tipper runs red as runs red as frothing wine, and its deepest ooze thy life but lies curdled. Ye stand here like gi like giants as ye are. The strength of brass. The strength of brass is in your toughened sinews. But tomorrow. But tomorrow. Some Roman Adonis, with perfume, with perfume coming from his curly locks, shall with his lily fingers touch your red brawn and bet his sisters upon your blood. Hark! Hear ye yon lion roaring in his den? It's been, it's been three days since he has tasted flesh, but tomorrow he shall break his fast upon yours. Fine. And a dainty meal ye shall be. If ye are beasts, stand here like fat oxen and wait for the butcher's knife. If ye are men, follow me, strike down young God, and gain the mountain passes, and, do, and there do bloody work, like your ancestors at Thermopylae. Is Sparta dead? Is that old Grecian spirit frozen in your veins, that you do cower like a beleaguered hound under his master's whip? Oh, comrades, warriors, Thracians! If we must. If we must fight. Uh, let us fight. If we must fight, let us fight. If we must die, let us die. Let us slaughter our opponents. Let us slaughter our opponents. If we must die, let us die. Give him a hand, guys. <laughs>